Guess who's back? Back. He's back again. Oh no. Oh no. I'm back. Hello everybody and welcome to another unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed the last one, which... What was it again? Was it you? Yeah, it was you. It was the most source. Jeez. I, I'm not prepared again, guys. <laughs> so yes, last time we did this giant, who as you can see is literally taking up the whole shelf. But that's enough. That's besides the point, Austin. Focus. Focus. Search your feelings. <laughs> what is wrong with me? But you're here for a new unboxing, not just a recap of this. So I think we should just get started with um what it is. And it is one that I, well, I put a poll asking which one was first, him or this, and well, you guys chose him, so you know what this is, because it's the sequel, it is, oh Jesus, the Amber Collection Velociraptor from the Lost World Jurassic Park, the controversial one I know, but let me explain why I did this, it's because I want to talk about this line in general, because, let me just, uh, pardon me Mr. Picky Eyes, um, so, a while ago, I actually already got this guy, and I didn't do an unboxing of the Pteranodon, but I I have too many things to unbox anyway, so I just didn't have time and I unboxed him. Plus, I'm getting a few more. But anyway, that's besides the point. So, the reason why I want to do this is because this is classified as the line that is to be the best of the best that they can offer. Like, you want a perfect Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodon? Boom, here it is. You want a Tiger Raptor? Boom, here it's supposed to be is. But, the Trangdon, I consider the perfect one that they've done, of like, the dinosaurs. They've also done human characters and, like, all the raptors. And if you look at this one straight away, you're like, that's the JP3 raptor. This guy you look straight at, and he's not really... Like, you'll say, oh, it's a Tiger raptor, then you'll look at him and be like, wait a minute, no he's not. Why is... what's wrong with him? So, like, I'm gonna unbox him, well, first of all, we need to get him out of the box after we look at the box itself. So, of course, we get the Amber logo here. That's become, like, more popular than any logo I've ever seen. Like, I remember when the Dominion logo, like, the official one came out, someone made a statement on how, like, each Jurassic World one was, like, telling a story. Like, Jurassic World's logo was clean and, like perfect and then Fallen Kingdoms was cracked and like broken trying to reveal something and then Dominions the amber one that just came out a few like about a month ago when we saw the Demon Carnotaurus as well as the Atrociraptor names then we got that one and they were like now it's revealed what's underneath the jewel of the franchise which it's fitting I like that comparison but we got it here we get to see the raptor in all its glory and the hole, which I'm gonna get to that, because there's something that has been bugging me about them for so long. Then the side of the box shows, like, I love how it shows, like, amber is, like, flowing through the stone, because it, like, has a stone appearance for the color, and then the amber's flowing through. It looks really cool, in my opinion. But one thing I forgot to notice when I unboxed this guy until, like, well, when I bought him and stuff, is that each version, depending on what movie they're from, has their specific logo. So... This is the Tiger Raptor from Lost World, and it now has the Lost World logo instead of Jurassic Park. And this guy, he had the Spinosaurus logo. He doesn't have it on the amber piece, like, or plastic hold that's here. It's the T-Rex, but still, it's a nice, nice little touch. And then the back, which shows us the amber raptor, the raptor itself, and, like, amber it looks really cool. I love the animatronic of this guy. He's just so good! And then there's the toy, which we'll get to. But here's the part that just made me just like go, I give up, I give up. Here we go, Velociraptor, leaping and ready to attack. The Velociraptor is a shrewd and crafty carnivore. While wreaking havoc on Dr. Ian Malcolm and the other unwanted visitors to Issa Sorna, the Velociraptor's strengths and smarts are no match against a brave and skilled gymnast. Very crafty, Mattel. Very nice. This raptor's not happy with you. Wait until the big one comes. But yeah, guys. So, we've looked at the box. Oh, yeah, one more thing. One more thing. Ho, ho, ho. One thing that caught my predator eye is, you're probably getting close-ups of this, but on the side where it shows like an amber piece of mosquito and then some bones, it shows a fossil of a dinosaur. Now, 
Originally, I thought it was a T-Rex, because I got a quick glimpse of it and stuff it's like, oh, T-Rex on the side, very nice. But then I looked at it again, and it's not. It has three claws, and the head of all the large carnivores, because this is supposed to represent a large carnivore, and it's on the same all the other boxes that I've seen. And it's making me think that this could actually be for the Giga. Which, if that's the case, could that be Mattel foreshadowing future Amber pieces? Who knows? If they are, great job, because I will get an Amber Collection Giga, hands down. But now, let's get this guy out of the box, because, well, we need to unbox him. There we go. Amber, well, classic piece. And we'll, we'll just keep that there. Okay, now I'm going to need scissors, guys, because there's little bits of um, string attached to him, so I'll be right back. Aha! I have the scissors. And reminder to all little children there, please get parents' supervision. And if you don't have supervision, remember to cut away from yourself, because, I don't know, I've seen unboxings before from kids on YouTube, and, I, and they always cut towards themselves, and I'm like, oh my god, don't let it slide, don't let it slide. Uh, one more. Aha! I think that's all of them. There we go. The raptor is free. Now let's get rid of that. And there we go. Let's get this guy into a nice position. Because this guy... Well, actually, we're going to need you, Rodrigo, in a second. Because we need to compare him to you. Ooh, that's a nice feel on the tail, i got to admit. That's a nice rubber with them. I can feel the metal. I know there's a metal coil in this, too. Which, uh, that's going to be a little unfortunate. I'm going to need to do some warping on this because it's now going to be permanently up. But, let's get him into... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I may have some thoughts on this guy, but I you got to admit, he looks badass. Hold on, I know I can get... There we go. The Velociraptor from the Lost World. Oh my god, guys, like... Look at that pose, like he... Finally, you got a proper raptor pose already, like... One of his feet aren't fully aligned, but... This is the cred this is where Mattel really won me. Before when Fallen Kingdom came out, I was impressed by them because they actually made the dinosaurs look like the dinosaurs. Compared to Hasbro, it was gold then. But then when I thought about it, there was no creativity and stuff, and some things were very lacking, especially with like if we grab Rodrigo here, the Indoraptor, like Here's what I considered their best product. I considered Indoraptor their best product by far. Excuse me, I'm just going to move you. And the reason why was simply because of the fact that for Indoraptor, he was the one, the toy I've always wanted for a dinosaur as a kid. I've wanted them to be super poseable, have some cool feeling with the rubber and plastic, highly poseable, and like... I could get this guy into any kind of pose. Anything I could think of that I needed a complicated pose for, the Indoraptor could do it. Now, the only negative I've had with the Indoraptor is that it doesn't look 100% like it. And that's because of mainly the head. It's not wide enough and also the eye. And that's just a few things, which you can get done yourself, literally with some painting, some remodeling. And I've seen that. And, like, this was the toy that I thought Mattel should, like, stay for stay with because like these are the best like sure i like um the electronics and hearing the sounds all the time but it sort of doesn't allow kids to like do what they want to do like but with these guys the amber collection when i first heard of it me i was so excited mainly because they were gonna they, they said that they would be highly posable more posable than ever before and it's true like you've got more pose as much posability, if not a bit more, than the Indoraptor here. Like, look at the Tyrannodon here. I've got him in a position where, like, he's literally, like, about to land, or, like, you know, he's ready to swoop down and grab someone. And, like, you can have him as if he's walking, but not when he's using the stand, unfortunately. And also, you'd have to get the 
a metal piece to bend a bit more. And with this guy, you get everything. Like, the reason why this guy's got more posability than him is because they've proven something that, like, we've always wanted. Like, the raptor claws are able to be, um, moved. Like, the sickle claws are able to be moved. And that's, like, that's amazing to me. Like, the fact that they did something like this is amazing. Now, on to my this guy now. So, first of all, posability easily is 10 out of 10. Like, for me, the Amber line is going to be the best line they ever have. Like, I don't know what they're doing for Dominion, but if they have, like, toys just like this only, and no posable ones like these two, or three in this case, I will be a little disappointed, and I'll go into an explanation why, what they could do. Now, for the, um, raptor itself, the head, like, it looks more like a raptor than any raptor they've done, by far. But the reason why the head, um, is what, the paint job is where it's weak for this guy. Like, for Trendon, I would give the paint job, um, 9 out of 10. Like, maybe there could be a little bit changes, I haven't seen JP3 in a while. But with this guy, I instantly can tell when it's wrong. Like, it's the head mainly. Like, the body, the orange is perfectly fine. They could do a little bit darker, and the stripes could be more black, like they should. Like, the stripes should be completely black. They shouldn't be, like, this brown color that they have. It should just be completely black. And, like, even if we get the, um, image that's on here, you can actually see how it's supposed to look. And, like, for the head especially, the orange should be way more down. Like, where these black stripes on the, um, well, these stripes are supposed to be, it should be orange there. And the pale underbelly color... I think it's a little, I don't think it's bad, the, the light orange, the skin color. I just think it's a bit too light and it's too up, like, especially on the head. And the fact that the eye isn't what it's supposed to be. Like, I remember seeing the, um, what was it called? Beyond the Gates episode where they showed this guy, both these two. And they said, oh, this is completely accurate to him them and like they go on praising their work on the eyeball and I remember just being like uh his eye is yellow like I'm not too mad at it because of what this could be for the future of them and the problem with the amber line as a whole is that they're only focused on like the raptors basically apart from the pteranodon and human characters everything else is velociraptors you've got the raptor squad you got the JP raptor the big one, which I'm actually getting pretty soon, and that one looks awesome. The male Velociraptor you have as well. I haven't seen that one really in a while, so I can't give my thoughts on it. But the reason why I wanted to unbox the set is what I think they should do going forward with this. Because this has been so successful. That's why I think they should focus on like doing bigger carnivores as well, and herbivores. Like, imagine if they did like a Gallimimus of this, or, um, a triceratops where like if the legs were posable as well and also you were able to get multiple positions like the head simply you could do a ball joint and like you know simply for that for ceratopsians and then tail you can have a bit of movement and then the legs simply and then movie paint job there you go triceratops is done they should try and expand this and like they could even do big carnivores like if, say, we had an Amber Collection T-Rex, I don't say think it has to be, like, the size of, like, the other T-Rex toys. Like, for example, if we compare um, this guy, like, I don't think that we would need an Amber T-Rex that's, like, this size. It could be a little bit smaller. Like, they could do this size if they wanted to. And the thing that would be so good, like, so good for them, for the posability, is, like, with simple thing like the feet. Like, if they did a T-Rex, like, if you look at all the T-Rex's feet and stuff, they're fully plastic on the rotating pieces, that's it. And you, say like, say like you want to have it where, like, one dinosaur is standing on top of the other. So, like, for example, Indoraptor's on the ground, Toro's standing, but you can't get it to look like it's actually standing on them. It's like, literally, it's like, you're forcing it to. But... What if, like, for the toes, because, like, they're long enough, and especially because they're big carnivores, what if they had joints in on the toes 
that allowed them to like curve. That would be the best thing for me. Like, let me just put you back, thank you, Toro. I think what they need to focus on, like they need to do that. Like, if say we got like, or like if they did an Amber Collection version of the Indoraptor, like the head structure's exactly right. Like the body is the same. Like, they already proven that they can do it with the Indoraptor, because they did it for their first ever Indoraptor toy. And now that they're doing it this, where they're saying they're going to try and go bigger and better, like, this is a step in the right direction. My only complaint for this one is the paint job isn't 100% correct. If they made it 100% correct, like, if, if we had a fully posable Indoraptor that, like, looked exactly like the movie version, like, all they need to change for me, for the Interruptor, is like make the toes more opposable, including the sickle claw, and widen the head structure to be more like the movie and the eye color. That's all they need to do, and I would buy that instantly. I would get that in a heartbeat. I'd be like looking on Mattel's websites and like, Interruptor um, figure for Amber Collection? Sold. I'm getting it. That's just me. Now, for the toy in general, I would say. This is a 7.5 to 8. The reason why is mainly color. Like, if they had to fix the color on, like, the head, like, if the stripes were completely black and, like, the orange was a bit down, this would be perfect for me. That's all they needed to do. Like, I could tolerate the golden eye because, like, you know, there aren't the best images around, like, most perfect images for the animatronics, which is what they base them off, I'm pretty sure. And, like, if they did a redo of this, they would definitely win for me. But guys, that's gonna wrap up this video, and well, yeah, there, well, uh, there it is. I'm, I love this guy, he is amazing, and the fact that like, you look at him and you're like, uh, that's a Velociraptor. Like, the Velociraptor toys in general have been really like cheap. The only good one is the Super Colossal Blue figure, and that's why I really like the Amber line, because, like, they finally gave the Raptors the justice they deserve. But, yeah, so, like, Amber Raptor for the Lost World, I gave a 7 out of 10. But, if you've enjoyed this video, I would appreciate the like, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to join the hunt, as we're almost at 1.5 thousand, and hopefully we can reach 2,000 subscribers before the release of Evolution 2. Hopefully we can do that. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye!